Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. I have to say that I am uh, very, very excited. This is my um, uh, first time ever presenting in, uh, in Greece. I never presented in, uh, in uh, Greece before. So my dear friends from uh, Pilones, where, where are Manos and George, by the way? Just, oh, they're here. So they tried to, to teach me a few Greek words uh, before. I don't know. So they, they, I was a failure. I, I couldn't, I couldn't really. So I'm a lost cause. I, I know that. But maybe, maybe uh, uh, someday. So I'll introduce myself. I'm uh, uh, Ranerel. I've joined uh, the company F5 a few months ago after spending uh, seven years in Cisco. Uh, so I have a lot of friends from the from the Greek operation in, in Cisco. I've been working with the operation for a long, long time, and. Um, and my headquarters just moved from San Jose, where Cisco actually sits, up north to Seattle at the feet of beautiful Mount Rainier, which is like a rainy, a rainy place, but a very nice uh, place. I'm now planning my first visit to Seattle, never been there yet. And I will share one more thing. So my hobby in Israel is uh, writing. I've published uh, a novel, a thriller, in the largest uh, publishing house in Israel a few years ago. It became a bestseller. And just about the time that I've joined um, that I've joined F5, I actually I actually um, uh, completed my second book. Now I'm working with uh, so my, my friends again, Manos and George, offered uh, some assistance with the Greek translation for the second book. So I'm going to keep you up on this promise. You know that I, I won't forget the promise. Okay, so I love good stories, and 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 I'll try to make the this short presentation as interesting as possible for you. So I'll start from the uh, from the end, and uh, stories go like this. Sometime we start from the end. So we're seeing now applications as the most valuable asset that an organization that an organization uh, has, and and. The way that we build this, or the way that we analyze this in F5, is that we, we look at the technological evolution that we had, and we divide us into three, three different eras according to the way that capital was generated, or according to the way that business value was generated. So going back real quick to um, the manufacturing revolution mid last uh, century, the, the investment was in physical capital, you know, businesses building factories, machines, automations, the industry giants uh, formed. So the investment was in physical capital and actual physical assets generated the business value. Later on, we're seeing a significant change in the model mid last century, the 50s. Uh, a new model emerges, and the model is based on talent. The value generation is based on, on talent. So we're seeing services companies rise, huge talent pools. Uh, during this time, so you see companies like McKinsey uh, growing, IBM is transforming itself, very interesting times. And what we're seeing now is a change toward application capital. So applications are the one who are actually generating the business value for organization. So I'm not going to go into any digital transformation cliches about Uber or Airbnb, but I will say, I will ask you to look at Uber just for one second from a value generation perspective. So Uber does not employ its drivers, it does not own the cars, so it does not have any physical or human assets at all. Airbnb is roughly the same. But what you can see here that these companies, what do they have? They have the application, the operation, the brand, that's it. For Uber, I don't know, maybe one day they'll build their own fleet of autonomous vehicles and then they can rule the world. But aside from that, uh, they have no physical or human assets. Everything is based on, on, on the application. So even companies which weren't born in the cloud, like more classical companies such as Nike or Starbucks are actually building some very strong application assets as well. They gradually accumulate such application assets. And, and what, we're, what we're currently seeing that while new companies are actually leaning almost entirely on application assets, on application capital, more senior companies are building these assets, these application assets, on top of their already existing human and physical ones, which is very, very 
which is very interesting because they're currently, these companies are currently ger generating more applications than any other born in the cloud company out there. And respectively, what we're seeing is a huge increase in the number of applications. So if IDC uh, estimated that in 2018, there were roughly 250 million apps out there, uh, the outlook for the, for the end of next year is over 1.7 billion apps. And, and this is not something new. This is an ongoing trend. And what matters in this new economy is the organization's ability to act fast, to scale fast, while making sure that everything is secure. But not only that. So organizations not only need to do that, but they need to do that better than their competition. And what we're seeing in recent years that more and more companies, organizations, are looking at their applications as a portfolio. So a portfolio of applications. And, and consequentially, organizations who actually manage their application assets more efficiently, they're developing some very, very interesting capabilities. We'll touch more on this. If you, if you want to join, we have a workshop on NGINX. It's a company that we acquired. We call it code to customer, the way that we deliver the application. So we have a workshop in 2 p.m., if I'm not mistaken, and the one who will be delivering it is Ori Akov. He's our system engineering director. He sits back there and, and quietly and taking photos. So I think you can enjoy this um, uh, session as well. Okay, so let's talk about visibility that an organization has into his own applications. So what we're currently seeing is, or lack of visibility. But what we're currently seeing is that organizations have pretty good visibility into their critical applications. But this is far from being enough. So uh, on, on average, on average, two-thirds of the organizational applications are not defined as critical applications. But this statistic, from a security perspective, doesn't matter at all. It doesn't make a difference. And I'll tell you two short stories. Probably, maybe some of you have heard of this, uh, these stories. So these are two from the US, very quickly. So the first is a retail company, a very big one in the US. This story was uh, very famous. You probably heard of it. So they were breached. Uh, 3.5 million customer entries were stolen. And my question to you, if you want to answer it, so um, how, was, how did the hackers got into the organization? Where was the breach? Do you want to give it a try? I'll answer. Yeah, go ahead. Security? Capsule? Gaps. There were, secu there were huge security gaps, and, that, and that's true. But they entered through, um, and that's, that's a true story, through the system who's monitoring the climate levels at the branches. So the system was monitoring the moisture level, not a critical application at all, which was not secured. So this was the way that they were breached. And the second story, very quickly, is a casino operator in the US. If you've been to Vegas, you know this company. They were breached. The high roller database was stolen. It happened again. This is a story from eight months ago. It happened again a few weeks ago with another casino operator. They were breached. And this time, the entry point, and, and listen to this, because this is a true story, was the digital thermometer in the goldfish aquarium at the lobby. It's a true story. And, and it's, it's not a critical app, right? Unless you really, really like fish, which, which, which is fine. You know, I like fish as well. So... Um, <laughs> So, it's, uh, so that's the situation. This is exactly what F5 has been doing in terms of, in terms of uh, security. And around these concepts, a complete or a very extensive platform of application services was, uh, was developed from the end user perspective to the data center's core, no matter where the application uh, resides, so the company enables organizations to quickly and safely deploy any app anywhere with a fabric-like platform with numerous internal connections. So starting from things like uh, application delivery or traffic management and going through 
uh, securing application workloads with API gateways and DDoS protection and DNS security and anti-fraud and SSL orchestration and web protection while venturing into the fascinating space of uh, application servers. And it seems that when looking at this platform, that the company was building towards this moment for a very, very long time. And, and as a company, I think that we can proudly say at this point in time that we have the most deep and the most extensive portfolio of application services in the industry. And, and complementing this is our strong, our very strong collaboration with all three large cloud providers, so AWS, Azure, and uh, GCP. So essentially, it's a policy-driven model. So you can have the same policy, the same security policy that you have on-premise, on the cloud environments. Across different clouds, you can execute the security policy regardless of the infrastructure vendor that you're, uh, that you're using. So I will wrap this up by saying that I personally, I'm working just uh, almost four months in, in the company right now. So I'm feeling really humbled and, and proud to stand here today and, and representing F5 in front of you in your beautiful, beautiful country. And, um, and, and you promised me a tour in Acropolis, so, so we will do this. And, and I have one more promise to you. So we're now heavily investing in Greece. We're recognizing the potential in the market. The market is very, very vibrant. Uh, so one last promise from me to you is that you're going to hear a lot more about F5 in the near future. So thank you very much for hosting me. Thank you very much.